Hi, I'm Keenan. This is No Octothorpe. I want to talk about all of the things I love about Forza Horizon 5, the latest entry in the Forza Horizon video game series by Playground Games and Turn 10 Studios. I have a complicated relationship with the Forza series, as I do with most racing games, because as a genre, I find that most racing games straddle two distinct worlds. On one hand, they are intoxicating displays of technical wizardry, both in their audiovisual presentation as well as what they offer the player in terms of mastering their own technical prowess of driving cars really good. On the other hand, you drive around and around and around and hope that the next time you drive around, you do it a little bit faster. I find that comically dull. To me, that repetition-turned-mastery gameplay loop has never been truly satisfying when you're driving around constrained racetracks or mostly empty open worlds, and no amount of pretty cars that I like the look and sound of but otherwise know next to nothing about can sustain my interest. So while I admire what the Forza series has brought to the genre over the course of its 16-year history, especially its more recent drive to blend simulation with accessibility, I typically bounce off of them rather quickly. Forza Horizon 4 changed this for me by offering an open-world racing experience that felt rewarding right from the start, while also displaying the sheer artistic and technical fortitude that flagship racing games are known for. It was a wacky, wild mix of ridiculous events and gorgeous scenery, not to mention a plethora of beautiful toys to drive. Most of all, it was fun. It was, fun. It was just fun. If there was ever a point where the developers had to choose between making something real and making it fun, they went with fun. That didn't detract from their clear love of cars or autosport in general, but they didn't let things like physics or reality get in the way of fun. I loved that about Forza Horizon 4. It was a game that unapologetically embraced its existence as a video game, prioritizing that drive for fun over everything else. And it did what few other games in the genre could. It made me love racing, and it also made me appreciate the cars I collected and drove. I found myself dipping back in over the years just to tool around and smash some billboards or take part in a race. It was a wonderful game that rewarded the player no matter how much time they spent with it. And now we have Forza Horizon 5, which takes everything that made Forza Horizon 4 great and basically just gives more, more events, more wackiness, more graphics, more sound, more fun. I love so much about this game. I love how Forza Horizon 5 looks, especially when compared to Forza Horizon 4, a very handsome game in its own right. I always find it a little gross to use the word handsome to describe the look of something that's not a person, but for whatever reason, I feel like Forza Horizon 4 is a handsome game. Forza Horizon 5, on the other hand, is a spectacle for the eyes. Everything about this game is a visual feast. I love how it looks in 4K Dolby Vision running at 60 frames per second. I love the exquisite depth and detail in the ground or the foliage, as well as the ray-traced reflections on the Xbox Series X's quality mode at 30 frames per second. Though I love the silky smooth perfect frame rate of the Xbox Series X's performance mode even more. I love how stunning this world is. The sheer variety of biomes available in the pseudo-realistic recreation of Mexico Every vehicle conjured into existence by the developers, even the menus in this game, are gorgeous. The map, while sometimes overwhelming in how much information it's trying to convey, is a work of art. The iconography is good. The typography is good. I even love how it looks when you finish a race. Like, congrats on getting 11th place! The water is beautiful. I can't even get over how much I love the look of the little droplets of water that splash on my screen when I drive through a river, or how the droplets of water also splash on my car when I drive through a river. I love the reflections on the surface of the cars. I love the bright and beautiful buildings in Guanajuato. I love the draw distance and how much of this world you can see from the top of the volcano. I love how massive the world looks from that towering peak. And I love that if I see something far away, I can drive to it. I love the smoke trails the cars leave when you're doing burnouts. Holy shit, I love the smoke trails. Seriously, look how good this smoke looks in the headlights. What? I love the lighting. 
good lighting can push synthetic worlds to the precipice of realism, and Forza Horizon 5's lighting often produces remarkably convincing scenes. I love the way the light shines through the thin membrane of giant leaves. I love the way the sun bounces off of the pavement and glints off of the cars. I love the way the sun shimmers off of the sand. I remember the first time I drove at night and slowed my car down and was left, mouth agape, looking at the taillights of my 2019 Chevrolet Corvette ZR1. Get a load of these taillights. I love the audio. I love how these cars sound. I love how I can rev my engines as I am considering new parts. I love the hacking sputter that emits from the exhaust when I've installed an aspirator. I love how the sounds of the world and all of its vehicular inhabitants envelops me in Dolby Atmos surround sound, immersing me in the rain and the rubble and the rumbling and the roaring. It's a smorgasbord of audio stimuli. I love the physics objects. Everything feels like it's made of balsa wood and driving into detritus causes it to splinter and explode and toil in the air as though it's blasted from a jet's intake. Cobblestone walls crumble as I careen in a Carrera. Cacti lay shredded in my wake. There's such a visceral sense of mayhem that adds to the fun and lets you know, hey, don't take this too seriously, it's okay. Smashing stuff is in and of itself a very simple, satisfying, and playful reward. In fact, I love how this game rewards me for everything I do. I can barely go a couple seconds without triggering a skill multiplier, or filling my experience meter, or earning accolades, or unlocking new races, PR stunts, or milestones. It showers me in praise, be it in the less tangible, excited shaking of an amped up 10x multiplier that culminates in the sweet, explosive release of skill points, or in the very tangible onslaught of toys clothing, emotes, expressions, and of course, vehicles. Forza Horizon 5 loves to give me presents just because I exist. And I can think of nothing to satisfy my jaded millennial heart more than participation trophies just because I decided to drive a Bugatti Veyron through a field really fast. I love the vehicles in Forza Horizon 5. I love how they make moving around the world feel. I love the way that their tires grip the road and how their handling changes when moving from tarmac to dirt or vice versa. I love how detailed and beautiful they are, whether you're in the Forza Vista mode or driving around the world or splashing through water or racing on a dirt road or sailing through the air like a giant metal hippo who saw a cliff and made a terribly ill-advised decision. I love how I can customize every car to my liking, from brand new parts that alter the speed and specialty of the vehicle, to the robust design tools that enable me to create literal works of art, something for which I have zero patience, but I do admire those who put their blood, sweat, and tears into their liveries, especially when they're gracious enough to share their designs with the community for me to download and apply to my own car, like I made this. I love the tuning screen. I love that there's a whole area of this game that I will never, ever, 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 ever use because I am not a car nerd and I do not want to fuck around with it. But I know that there are people similar to the aforementioned livery nerds who will go to town and tweak every single little setting until their car performs exactly to their specifications. It makes me happy knowing that someone will be happy with that. I love that Forza Horizon knows my name. Welcome back, Keenan. Growing up with a relatively uncommon name was always an exercise in disappointment when I would visit a gift shop at whatever destination my parents dragged me to, only to find the novelty license plates or keychains or t-shirts rife with the names of my peers, the Adams, the Amandas, the Bryans, the Beckys, the Sams, the Samanthas, had not been introduced in any meaningful way to the concept of Keenan. In fact, most people hadn't when I was growing up, as the most common retort to my introduction was someone saying, Ken? And I would clarify, no, Keenan, only to have them fail to latch on and ask Keegan, which ironically was the name that my parents had originally chosen for me before ultimately deciding they preferred to swap out the G for an N, something for which I am eternally grateful as I gravely dislike the guh sound of a G. I imagine that has a lot to do with the fact that my first name is Greg, which has no fewer than three entire G's in its spelling. Yes, Three. So not only did I grow up identifying with a middle name that no one knew, my first name happens to be an uncommon spelling of a common name, 
Instead of Greg, short for Gregory, I have Greg, which is short for nothing. I share this name with my father, and while that's not explicitly the reason I dislike the name altogether, it is certainly a factor, if only because it ensures that I am confronted with its existence on a frequent basis. Whether it's going to the doctor's office or filling out paperwork or doing my taxes, the name Greg is what I legally have to declare as my own, despite the fact that I couldn't identify less with it. I always have identified as Keenan because I have always been called Keenan. From the moment I came home from the hospital as a newborn baby, my parents knew they were going to call me Keenan to, quote, make things less confusing confusing, so they didn't have two people respond when someone said the name Greg in our house. What they didn't anticipate is that Greg would latch onto me officially in a way that proved confusing not only to me, but to almost everyone I meet, which meant that I would never be allowed to disassociate myself from its existence and just be the Keenan I always wanted to be, the Keenan my parents wanted me to be, the Keenan I was known as from the beginning, the Keenan whose consciousness I embody every waking moment of the day with rare exception. But due in large part to what I assume is some archaic patriarchal tradition, I am saddled with my father's first name. And that is the name that officially matters for everything officially relating to my official existence. I can't tell you how many teachers I had growing up who, on the first day of school, would go down their roll call list and announce names, and I would be sitting there in anticipatory dread because I would hear, Greg Schneider, and I would raise my hand and respond, I go by Keenan, and they would inevitably either A, get confused, or B, chuckle and say something along the lines of, oh, I didn't know Keenan was short for Greg. It wasn't funny the first time, and no amount of repetition from each new wannabe stand-up comic who fell face first into teaching made it realize its potential for hilarity, Mr. Patterson. I love smashing billboards. I love how the game tracks my wanton billboard smashing, which only serves to further encourage me to smash more billboards. I love the way the minimap paints the roads I drive on to let me know I'm making progress in discovering something new. I love that they track all the roads I've driven on. I love that when I get disconnected from the online server, the game usually transitions seamlessly into offline mode, and the transition back into online play when the connection is restored is just as seamless. I love that when I would jump in to do research or capture footage of the game, I'd get distracted and just end up playing the game for like 30 minutes. It's that good. Like, I would be playing and suddenly realize like, oh, I should really get back to work. I love that they modeled the interiors of buildings in a freaking racing game. I love the car mastery system. I love how the drive guitar system populates races with my Xbox Live friends, even when they're not online so I can smash up Charles's car whenever I want. I love the way the cars sink into the sand as they drive on it. I love how menacing this massive wall of sand looks as it approaches. I love that I can turn off damage completely, so my cars always look beautiful and pristine. I love how silly some of the car horns are. I love that I turned this Ford Escort into a rally car. I love this car's dumb face. I love honking at other players as I drive around the world, only to have them honk back. These little moments of passing connection are delightful to me, and they always make me smile. I love the Forza Link feature that lets me easily say words, sometimes contextually important words, to other players with a couple presses of the D-pad. I love that people keep gifting me this fucking van. Please stop. I love how I can gift cars to people and even specify what kinds of players I want to gift them to. I love gifting cool cars to new players to hopefully make their experience a bit better. I love the idea of someone who is new to Forza Horizon 5 finding the car I gifted to them only to have it serendipitously turn out to be their dream car, IRL, and that that experience is something that solidifies in their brain as a pivotal moment in their time playing the game, that they may think about that moment years later when they recount why they liked Forza Horizon 5 so much. I love the thought of them excitedly telling a friend or family member about how some random stranger gave them their favorite car. I love that even if that scenario never comes to fruition, that Forza Horizon 5 made me think of it as a possibility, therefore compelling me to continue gifting cars whenever I get the chance. 
I love all of these accessibility options. I love that even if I never have to use them, that this game enables as many people as possible to enjoy it as much as possible. I love that I can change my character's outfits and hairstyle. I love that I can give my character prosthetics. I love that I can choose my character's pronouns, and I love that the in-game voiceovers use the correct pronouns when referring to my character. I love that it imported my character from Forza Horizon 4, but now I can make them a non-binary racing superstar. I love that Forza Horizon 5 offers a little bit of something for everyone. I love how thoughtful and considerate Playground Games is of the broader gaming community. I love that they were given the permission to make a fun, wild game that respects its players and tries to connect even more people, regardless of background, regardless of ability, regardless of interest in cars or racing or whatever, and let them enjoy themselves in a giant sandbox full of toys to make their own fun. That's what I love about Forza Horizon 5. And I think you will too. Thanks for watching. Oh.